today we'll be looking at certain okay. chapters, chapter 17 of the book, uh, which is all about uh, pigments. So we'll be looking at uh, the workflow in which we can follow. And it's just like a follow up to last week uh, discussion. So we'll look at the workflow in which we can follow in uh, developing our vignette uh, for uh, our package. So basically what they discussed in the book is that a vignette is just a long form of guide to our R package because once uh, we are developing our package, uh, we need to what, uh, guide our users that are using uh, our package, the, the workflow in which uh, they can follow just like a demo in which they can follow in, in, able, in order for them to be able to, uh, to run the codes uh, that, that are in that R package. So basically what they do uh, discuss, there are some specific functions uh, that are in the R package in which we can, we can use uh, the browse, uh, the browse uh, vignette uh, function. So when we use uh, this browse vignette function, we can assess all, all the vignettes that have been pre-installed in all the R package that is in our machine. We can just use this browse vignette function to get to browse through all the vignettes that has been pre-installed in our R package. They also discuss that with this browse vignette function, we can specify a specific vignette in which we want to assess. Maybe we say tidy R is going to just display uh, the vignette of the tidy R package. So if we specify for any other package, so that is the specific vignette in, in which we'll be able to what, uh, assess for that purpose. But we can also, they, they also explain, uh, we can also use this vignette function. So when we are using this vignette function, we can say what vignette we want to look at. We want to look at rectangle. So this rectangle is coming from which package? It's coming from the from the tidy R package. So, but but they also like, do explain that. But there are some instances whereby we want to assess vignette for a specific package in which we have not installed uh, in our machine. So in that case, uh, we can we can browse. Vignettes that is already pre-built that is that is on CRAN. So we can use this this link. Uh, we can just look for look at uh, some vignettes that is already on any maybe any specific R package that has been submitted to CRAN. So we can use uh, this link, but this link is just for the vignettes uh, for the tidy R package. So that is just basically for the int intro. I don't know. If uh, there is any comments, any contribution before we go into the next slide. Good for me. Okay. Me. So like uh, the second part is just like a workflow uh, for writing a vignette. So when we want to, they do explain that when we want to create a vignette, uh, we just use uh, this specific function the use underscore vignette function that is coming from the use this package. Then we specify the name of the vignette in which we want to create. So in this case, we are using my iPhone vignette. So it's going to, uh, it's, go it's just going to populate all the uh, files in which we need uh, for to, to, to create our, our vignette for us. Then in that case, what is this use underscore vignette function? What is it going to do for us? It's going to what create a vignette directory for us. So in this vignette directory, uh, it's going to add the necessary dependencies to descriptions. So if there is any dependency for for that uh, vignette in which you want to create, it's going to populate them, put them in the description file. It's going to also add it to the uh, vignette builder fields and adds both scan it R and R markdown uh, so suggest so that once user uh, be, uh, are installing this, make sure that we are going to have this installed in that case. So it's going to also create a draft, draft a vignette, vignette my vignette.rmd because 
a vignette in which we are creating is just a, it's just an a R markdown file. But in this R markdown file, we are going to put all our codes in which we want to uh, execute uh, once the user to run. Everything is going to be in that R markdown file. So it's also going to add some patterns to the, the dot .git ignore to ensure that files created as a side effect of preventing your vignettes are kept out of source control. So what is there is also, they also explain that once once we have the draft vignettes, the the workflow is like is is straightforward for us. First, we are going to start adding our pros code chunk to to the vignettes. Then, once we have added our codes to the vignettes, for us to be able to use, assess this function, we can just use this function uh, that is coming from the dev tools. That is the dev tools load us to load uh, that function in to our, so that users can be able to assess the functions, then uh, we can render the entire vignette uh, periodically. Then we can render it, or if we are not doing that, we can just we can just install it using the control plus shift plus B, or we can use dev to install to to install uh, the vignette to install the vignette. Uh, in our machine. So once this vignette has been installed, we know uh, the users, uh, they are going to have access uh, to, to the vignette uh, in which uh, we, have, we have added to our R package. Uh, but they also, I think they also do explain, there are some things in which they also do explain uh, is that if this package has been submitted to, I think to CRAN, if the package has been submitted to CRAN uh, and we are installing the package from CRAN, I think the vignette is automatically what installed. But they also say that when we, but when users are installing this package, the development version of the package from from GitHub, uh, in that case, that in that initial instance, once they are installing that package, they, they need to ensure that the vignettes that they have they install they set it to true so that once they are installing uh, that the development version of the package, uh, the vignettes will be automatically installed in that uh, process. I think they ex do explain that uh, also. They do explain that also in the book. Sorry, I did not include this. Yeah. So for this uh, part, is all of, it's just about uh, the metadata of the package. So so all those like the description file, the title. So in this case, for the metadata of the package, we are going to have the title. Here we are going to give it uh, the title of the vignette uh, in which uh, we are creating. But if we do change anything here in the title, we need to also ensure uh, that the, we also modify that change in the vignette entry, which is vignette title. We need to, mod they also explain that we might, Anything we modify in the title, we have to also come back down here to ensure that we also do that same modification so that once we pre-built this, it will get automatic updates because we can modify the title here. Then we the users will forget to also update this. So there will be an there will be issues there. So we have to also update here so that we can capture that change. And the, this metadata is always written in YAML, which is yet another markup language because we can see we start with the three back ticks. We are ending with the three back ticks. We are having the title of the vignettes. We are also going to have uh, the, the outputs and the outputs is always HTML uh, vignettes. So once uh, they render this R markdown file, the, the final output uh, is going to be HTML. But I think uh, the, for, there are some package in which uh, the output is always going to be, I think it's uh, PDF. I think th that is uh, when they are using the LaTeX uh, convention. So the output is going to be in PDF. So, but in this case, uh, uh, the output is going to be in HTML because this is an R markdown file. So when it's, it, the, 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 it got rendered, it's going to be, in PDF. 
So they said the default Vignette uses his templates. So the, in the templates, uh, I think we I've talked about the title. I've talked about uh, the outputs, the outputs in which uh, we are going to go. Uh, we, we also know that Vignette is a block of special metadata, but they are in some instances, they also, they also explain that we, that we generally don't use these fields. That is the author and also the dates because the author we don't use this unless the vignette is written by someone not already credited as a package author then also like uh, the dates because we know that the dates since we'll be using the this uh, sys dot date function so this sys dot date function is always going to specify the current uh, date it's going to take us to the current date so they, they do explain that these two fields uh, is not really necessary uh, when when we are when we are when we are uh, want to populate uh, the metadata of the package. So they said these two, the author, the date, uh, is not really uh, is not really important. Then the last there is for us to use the library, and we call uh, we call our package library then we call up well they, they do explain that we we might be tempted to temporarily replace this library call with load all because we know when we use uh, the load all uh, functions uh, it's going to ensure that uh, we are uh, we have access to 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 all the functions that are being pre-installed in that packet but they advise that we don't instead we to use this template given in section 18.2, which is like calling the library of, and within the library we specify uh, the the package uh, in which in which uh, in which we have uh, developed uh, the Vignette for. I don't know if there are any additions uh, before I go to the next uh, slide. Good for me, or for me. Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, this uh, this part is just about uh, advice on writing uh, writing a vignette. Just about giving us advice uh, when we are developing our vignette. So he said he explained that when writing a vignette, you are teaching someone because we should put ourselves in the shoes of others. We need to make this vignette to be as simple as possible because the, the simpler the vignette become very easy. Uh, for users that are using this package, uh, they, it becomes easy for them to, to make use of this uh, package uh, and this give us uh, feedback. Uh, I think, uh, I think they, uh, they do explain that uh, one of the principles for uh, the Tidyverse package is that before, uh, before they submit any package to CRAN, they usually write a blog post about that package. And during the process of them develop writing the blog post uh, for this package, uh, they can discover specific bugs and specific issues in which they can resolve, which is very important. And during that, that process, they are going to what, fix uh, this issue uh, before, before they make final submission of this package uh, to CRAN. So they, they do explain that we should make uh, everything about uh, this. It should be simple as possible so that uh, uh, users uh, that are using the package, it becomes very easy uh, for them to, to follow. I think uh, that is just like a summary of what I have uh, in the slide before. Okay. So, so every time I read a blog post about a package uh, from the studio team, like it's basically like uh, a testing. <laughs> So doing like user testing, something like that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that's funny. It's a good way of doing it. Well, that's good for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I like so... that comment as well. Okay, this one is just about links. Uh, how we can how we can add links uh, to the to the package vignettes. So because you know when we are creating package uh, vignettes, uh, we can have more than uh, 
more than one functions in which we are developing our Vignet for, but we need to ensure that those function, we can make us, we might also want to make functions uh, uh, to another, uh, make reference to functions in another package. So, but we need to make sure that these functions, they are interlinked uh, together when we are, uh, when we are developing a Vignet. So, just like for example, they have an example. This is a Vignet. Vignet link. This is the linking. The package is what package down. So in this case, they can have something like a uh, some function. Okay, and in this some function, we can wrap this some function within a thing within backticks. We can use uh, within backticks uh, to wrap uh, this uh, some function. So to make sure that this function is what auto link, we can to make sure it is what auto link. Maybe we can because we can be within this big name, we can make reference to this uh, some function. And once we call it with a question mark, it's going to take us uh, to where that some function is in our machine. We can also have vignet fascinating topic, which is auto link to fascinating topic article within the package down sides of the host package. And they do explain all this is being done by the backticks in which we are using to surround uh, this Vignet. So maybe we have our function, we, sorry, we, uh, we put our function within, uh, within backticks such that once we want to make reference uh, to that function, uh, because the link, what is really providing the link uh, for this Vignet is the like the package down, because if the package down, uh, the package down site is going to make sure that it's just like a website, wherever we have developed our Vignet in the R RMD file, we have pushed everything, we have built, push everything uh, using this package down uh, site, and within this package down site. Uh, we are going to have all our demo, all our examples uh, in which we are writing for to develop our Vignet. We are going to arrange everything in that order, but they are interlinked between what we can make reference to this. We can make reference to maybe function A, maybe function B uh, within uh, our Vignet. But because of this linking, they are interlinked. Uh, they are interlinked uh, together. So that is uh, basically uh, what I have uh, for this section. I don't know if there are any further addition before we proceed. I think uh, I was going to say, I think that's a valid argument they make that like, it does seem more beneficial to be able to link. <laughs> yeah. To documentation i don't know if you remember using like you know like before like this packet zone stuff we needed to download the pdf and then use the latex link of the pdf <laughs> yeah I don't know if you have done that swift. with swift yes yeah and it was all like <laughs> it's written in old school typeface and stuff and <laughs> yeah so i think it's an improvement even if like, you know, you have like this, this nice like rectangles of all the link into your PDF. But yeah. Oh, yeah, I see those rectangles. You know, in, in 10 top. years, we're, we're gonna go retro. We're gonna want to use that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we're good. Okay. Okay, this is about, I think this is about uh, the five parts. Uh, the, file, the, the parts to files uh, when we are uh, creating uh, our Vignets. It says sometimes it is necessary to refer to another file from a Vignette. The best way we can do this in, depends on the application. It's a figure created by code evaluator in the Vignette by default in the RMD, RMD workflow that we recommend that this takes care of itself. Such figures are automatically embedded into the .htm using the data URL. They say we don't, you don't need to do anything. Example, Vignet 
extending ggplot2 package uh, is ggplot2 generate a few figures in the evaluated code chunks. Then we have an external file that could be useful to users elsewhere in the package, but put search in the ints. They say we should put store, search in the ints folder of the package, perhaps ints external data and refer to it in system.file. So we can just call it like fs path to package, which is vignet sf2 package is coming from the SF. Then we can call it with the library SF. Then we use the system.file. The system.file will specify the path uh, to that file. Then the, the package where that file is coming from, which is SF, then we save it as file name. So when we call the file name, it just specified our path in which uh, that file can be found in our machine. Then we can use the st underscore read function, which is coming from the SF package to read that file name because it's a shape file because it's nc.shp is a shape file to read in that shape file. And we save it as nc, so which is going to display the shape file in which we just read in. Then they said an external file whose utility is limited to your vignette, which is alongside the vignette source files in Vignet. An external graphics file puts that, put that refers to it in the file parts, just like we have Kemet R, include underscore graphic function to, to include maybe any graphics in our package. So we should we can call we can call that external file. Uh, we can call that external file. We can call it this way, sorry. We can call it. Uh, we can call it uh, that way in order for us to load uh, that external file into our vignettes. Uh, we can specify the parts. Once we specify the parts, uh, we can have access uh, to that external file, and it will be get. Uh, it will be added into our vignettes uh, in which we are we are trying to to create. So for the next. So for this part, they were like saying that like how many vignettes are uh, in which we are going to create. So, but this one depends on the context, depends on the on the type of uh, package in which uh, we are working on. But basically, we know that uh, in every package we are creating, we are going to have uh, one vignette. But there are some instances whereby we are creating some kind of complicated uh, package. In that case, uh, we can we will have more than we are going to have more than one vignette because we need to give uh, each one because like the package in which we are having one vignette, maybe that package is named like uh, some package. We know that the vignette is going to be some package dot rmd. So that is how we the vignette uh, the rmd file for the vignette is going to be named. But when we are creating a complicated package, it's not going to be the same thing like this. Because the name of that, we, we don't even know how we can specify the name. Since this one is very easy, we can just name it some package.rmd. Then we put all our example in the Vignet. So such that uh, when that package page being installed, it can get automatic uh, the getting started link in the package down uh, website. But in this case, more complicated package probably need more than one vignette. It can be useful to think of the vignette like chapters of a book, because it's just like we are writing chapter of a book. So each chapter is going to have its own, is going to have its own uh, chunk for RMD file. They should be self-contained, but still link together into a cohesive whole because we need to see how uh, we can link each of these vignettes uh, together. There need to be a linking for those uh, vignettes uh, in which uh, we, are, we are creating such that we can make reference to any parts uh, of, that, uh, of that vignette in which, in which we, are, we are developing. I think uh, that is uh, basically what I got uh, from how many vignettes? So 
you know that if we are creating a simple package, we are going to have just one vignette uh, for complicated package. Uh, we are going to have more than one vignette, but we need to ensure that they are interlinked together uh, from the package uh, when using the package down uh, workflow. Okay, scientific uh, publications. Say that Vignette can also be very useful if you want to explain the details of your package. So we can also develop uh, a Vignette as if we are writing a paper. We are writing a paper that uh, we want to submit maybe with, and that paper we can submit it uh, to the Journal of Statistical Software or the, the, R, the R Journal. But in this, uh, these two journal, they are, they are, they normally have, uh, uh, they are all high impact journal. I think uh, their review process is very, they have a strict uh, review policies, okay? And before we can make any submission, we need to really take time and look at uh, what we have make the submissions in which we are making to these uh, two journals. Because they are, I think they are, they, the comments from reviewers can be very helpful for improving your package and dignity because they are going to give you useful feedback uh, about uh, the, our submissions. So, and those feedbacks, we can use uh, those feedback in improving, uh, in, in improving our package uh, in which we are working on. But if, uh, for instance, uh, we could not make it to, we cannot make any submission to this, uh, to uh, these two journals, so they do explain that we can make another submission to the Journal of Open Soft Source Software. So we can also make submission here, right? because if we just want to provide something very lightweight to folks, can easily cite package, consider the journal, we say we should consider this, because uh, that is where this uh, material, the Welcome, uh, welcome to, welcome to, welcome to Tidyverse. I think it was published. It was published. It was published uh, in the Journal of Open Source uh, Software. I think this example was published here. So they say if we want something that is very simple as possible, then we sh we should consider uh, making submission to the Journal of to the Journal of Open uh, Source uh, Software. Okay. Okay, what are the special considerations for Vignet uh, code? Okay, so the special consideration they said a recurring theme is that the R code inside the package need to be written different from the code in your analysis scripts and reports. Uh, they said this is true for your functions. They said any package used in a vignette must be a, must be a formal dependency that is must be listed in imports because once it's listed in imports, uh, it's going to be automatically imported uh, once uh, we install that or suggest in description files. So we have to list do specific package either as import or suggest once uh, the package is been installed, similar to our stance in test. Our policy is to write Vignette under the assumption that suggested packages will be installed in any context where the Vignette is being built. So they do explain they are the main method for control and evaluation in, in the .rmd document in the eval code chunk options, which can be, we can set the evaluation. So eval function is like, do you want this uh, chunk to be evaluated? Here would they say require namespace, some dependencies. So this evaluation here, not identical, sys.get environment, I think is to get the system environment of some things you needed. So we can call it this well in the R code chunk. Then we can also set the eval, File dot exist. Does this file exist? Then we said credentials are uh, you needed. We can put uh, the credential in which we needed uh, in in working when working with that uh, package. So, but they do give some examples here using the Google Sheet Four package in R. 
Here we have to say that can decrypt. You have the gaggle functions, which is to grab the secret. Secret can decrypt, which is coming from uh, Google Sheet 4. Then they use the kernel R options, option chunk set, then collapse. They set the collapse of the chunks to be true. Then the comments you always come with the hashtag. Then error is set uh, to true. Then the evaluation, which is going to be can 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 decrypt to to grab this chunk. Then this is just like a message. It's printing a message uh, uh, to the console. No token eval available code chunk will not be evaluated. Then this is calling the function Google Sheet for GS4 auth documentation. Then library is to enable uh, this uh, is to enable this. They said then we should take notice of the second chunk which uses eval not can decree which prints an explanatory message for anyone who builds the vignette without the necessary credential. So, so anyone that builds uh, that vignette uh, without uh, without uh, the necessary credential is going to print this message. No token available. Code chunk will not be. Uh, it, it will not be evaluated. Then they said the example above shows a few more handy chunks. Option use include false for chunks that could be evaluated but not seen in the rendered vignette. So we, maybe we want some chunk. We want those chunk to be evaluated, but we do not want the, it to be in the final output. So we can just set it to false. So in that case, the chunk will be evaluated, but in the final outputs, we will not see, we will not see the, uh, will, it will not be included. Then they said the echo option control whether the code is printed in addition to output. Finally, error should be set to true. So I think uh, when we set uh, the error to be true, the entire uh, chunk will be, will be run. But once we make any error in that chunk, it will go ahead. It will go ahead and render it, but will not get any, it will, it will let's show the error in the final output in that vignette when we set the error to true. But if we set the error to false, if we make any mistake, I think it will resolve to, it will terminate in that process. It will not be able to run uh, the, the, see the final output uh, from that uh, vignette. I think that is uh, basically, uh, what this special consideration for fitness chapter section is in the book is uh, what they explain. I don't know if uh, there is any addition. Well, I go to the next. I thought it never occurred to me to have um, like conditional code in a in the chunk option yeah, i don't yeah. know why <laughs> like yeah, it's yeah. now that they pointed it out it seems so obvious but. yeah <laughs> it's like every time it's happened to me i feel like i should read need our uh, documentation more then i forget it <laughs> um, yeah. but yeah it's, it's a good example i agree okay thank you very much Okay, this one is just about talking about article instead of vignettes. Uh, there is one last technique if you don't want any of your code to execute on CRAN instead of a vignette. You can create an article, which is a term used by package down for a vignette like .rmd document that is not shipped with the package, but that appears only on in the website because the article is going to appear only on the website is not going to go alongside with the package. An article will be less accessible than a vignette for certain users such as those with limited internet access because it is not present in, in the local installation but might be assessed acceptable compromise, for example, for a package that wraps a web API. We can draft a new article with this function that is coming from the use this uh, package, which is a use underscore article, which ensures the article will be 
included in the dot r build ignore. So when it is in the dot r build ignore, so once that package is being compiled, I think this article will not be will, it will ignore uh, the active article. A great reason to use an article instead of a vignette is to show your package working in concert with other packages that you don't want to depend on formally. Another compelling use case is when an article really demands a lot of graphics. This is problematic for a vignette user as the large size of the package causes problems with the RCMD check because it's going to create, take a long time for this RCMD check function to make to run for that function to run because of the at the size of the of the articles that we have added, and it's also burdensome for everyone who install it, especially those with limited internet, because it's going to take a longer time for so when someone wants to install your package because of the size of the of the articles, because the graphics or some other things, it is taking a lot of space, so it's going to take time for them to install this package. So I think that is uh, like uh, the, the guy, they do advise we should consider the size really, really matters. So we should make it should be small as possible so that it did not run into issues once uh, they want to install or once we want to run the RCMD check to check for specific issues in our package in which uh, we are working on. Okay, so this one is about how is vignettes, uh, how are they built and check. It can be helpful to appreciate the big difference between the workflow for function documentation and vignettes. The source function documentation is stored in our oxygen comments in our dot R files below the R. We use dev tools uh, document. So when we use dev tool document, it's going to work generate this dot rd file below the man. That is the manual, which is the documentation. This man dot rd file are part of the source package. The official R machinery cares only about the rd file. So this rd file, I think this is where the, our documentations, if we are, once we have generated our, our populated our, our functions, with the, the R oxygen skeleton, we can just call this document function that is coming from DevTools is going to what create that, generate those separate RD file and save everything there for us. So they say that the vignettes are very different because the R dot RMD file source is considered part of the source package and the official machinery of the RCMD check RCMD build and check interact with the vignette source and belt vignette in many ways. The result is that the vignette workflow feels more constrained since the official tooling basically treats vignette somewhat like this instead of documentation. So they say the behavior of this is different from when we are creating our initial uh, documentation in our, our package, there are some slight uh, difference between uh, the vignettes and our usual our usual R documentation for uh, our package in which uh, we are creating. RCMD build and vignette search. They said first, it's very important that we should realize Vignettes, which is our maybe we RMD source files exist only in a package in a source section or bundle. Vignettes are rendered when a source package is converted to a to a bundle dot RCMD check. But they say that the key takeaway from the above is that it is awkward to keep rendered vignette in a source package. And this has implication for the vignette development workflow. It is tempting to fight this and have tried, based on years of experience and discussions, the DevTools philosophy is to accept this reality, assuming that you don't try to keep belt vignette around persistently in your source package. Here are some, they gave us some kind of recommendation. 
Yeah, they say active, iterative work on your Vignette. Use your usual interactive, the RMD workflow, such as the button, dev tools, build RMD, which will be the Vignette, my Vignette, the RMD, to render a Vignette to HTML in the Vignette directory. Regards the Dutch HTML as a disposable preview, if you initiate Vignette with use underscore Vignette, this HTML will already be ignored. So this, this HTML, that is the final output from our, that we use in creating, is going to be added in the Git ignored file. So if we are pushing this uh, to GitHub, it's going, the, the Vignette is going to be what? Ignored in that process. That is why, if we are installing, uh, if you are installing the package, the development version of the package from GitHub, we need to say, we need to set that vignette equals to true. If we need the, to, if we want to get the vignette, if we are working with the development version of the package, we need to put another argument that vignettes to be put installed, we, we need to set that to true. So because as we are pushing, this uh, to GitHub, the Vignette is already placed in the Git ignored. So it's gonna be ignored by Git. So we need to set that to true so that once we are working with the development version of the package, we install it, uh, we can get access uh, to the Vignette. We can also make the current state of Vignette in development version available to, to the world. So how are we going to do that? Offer a package down website, preferably with automated build, build and deploy such as using GitHub actions to deploy to GitHub pages. Yeah, there you have Vignette in development version. So means that if we push anything to that branch or to GitHub, so GitHub action is going to, we just leave everything to GitHub action. Uh, that is uh, for it to build everything. Maybe if there are issues, so it's going to give, send us, and maybe we are going to get uh, notification from, from GitHub, so, uh, maybe they could, our GitHub action has failed in that process, then we can fix uh, that issue and make another push uh, to GitHub. They also explained that we should be aware that anyone who installs directly from GitHub will, will need to explicitly request Vignette. Example, dev tool install underscore GitHub, your yeah, dependency should be set to true, then build vignettes to be set to true because the, the first line I explained, I said the vignette is always added to the git ignore, so it's gonna be ignored. So we need to now set build vignette to be true. So when we are working with the development version uh, of that package, then we can make the current states of Vignette in a development version available locally. So how are we going to do this? We use the install your package locally and request that Vignette be built and installed. Example with DevTool in colon colon install, we have dependencies, true build Vignettes are true. Then pre-built Vignette for CRAN submission. Don't try to do this by hand or in advance, allow Vignette Rebuilding to happen as part of Dev to submit to CRAN. So, so for CRAN submission, so this function, this function submits CRAN of Dev Dev tools release, both of which build the package is going to do the job for us. So we cannot do that by hand. So we are once we use, we are using this function, it's going to handle the uh, the vignette part uh, for us. So we don't need uh, to do any. We don't need to do any editing. So if we really do want to build a vignette in the official manner on the ad hoc basis, then in that case, uh, we can use dev tools, build vignettes, we'll do this. But we have seen this lead to developer uh, frustration because it leaves the package in a peculiar form that is mismatch of a source package and an, and an unpack package uh, bundle. So this one, it normally leads uh, to issues. So I would prefer we use stick, uh, 
uh, with the examples I explained earlier, this non-standard situation can then lead to even more confusion. For example, it is not clear how this not actually installed vignette are meant to be assessed. Most developers should avoid using build vignettes and instead pick one of the approaches outlined above. So they do explain we should, we should avoid using this, then we should use maybe one of the package uh, approach in which uh, I do explain uh, above, which is so that we'll not run uh, into problem uh, when so our CMD check and vignettes. We conclude with a discussion of how vignettes are treated by our CMD check. This official checker expects a package bundle created by our CMD build as discovered both in the DevTools workflow. We re usually rely on DevTools check, which automatically does this build step for us before checking the package. So the RCM, this check is just like the DevTools check, has various command line options and also consult many environment variables. We are taking a maximalist approach here. That is, we described all the checks that could happen. So when the RCMD check does some static analysis of Vignex code and scrutinizes, the, the existence size and modification time of various vignettes related files. If your vignette uses package that don't appear in description that is cut here, if files that should exist don't exist or vice versa that is cut here, this could, should not happen if you use standard vignette workflow outlined in this chapter and it's usually the result of some experiments then they say that the vignette code is then extracted into the .r file using a tangle feature of relevant vignettes engine, which is the Kenneth R package. The code originating from chunk back as a var force will be commented out in this file. Then I think uh, that is uh, basically the last part, uh, I think that is the last part uh, of the book. The, what we just have there is just a meeting uh, video. Thanks, okay. Brother Femi. It was a long, long uh, chapter. Good job for doing it. Thank yeah, you. I didn't know like Bignet was like, uh, like basically like a hack. <laughs> Yeah, but it's. I think it's an important piece of the package because sometimes uh, not everything is documented in the function. Mm. More user so friendly. It's like, so. Yeah, like I have recently like stumbled upon an issue on a package that I use where two people are like discussing uh, the documentation in R, and you know, sometimes like basically like you understand. Like you need to know what the function does to check the function help. And if you do not know what the function does, where do you find information about how does it does it? If you do not know the function exists. <laughs> and Vignet here, like I feel can fill the space. Even if like to build them, it's very complicated. I mean, not very yeah. complicated, but like it's, it's special, I will say. Yeah. But thanks, Edward Femi. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, so good thank job. Thank you. Um, from Neil next week. I signed up for like three weeks from now. Also, cool, cool. Um, They've changed Howard, a bit. Yeah, Howard is no longer joining because of school. He's trying to graduate, so. Ah, nice. Um, yeah. Wish him luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think the um the order changed, by the way, Torrin, in the, the book. Oh, that's um, okay. Just so you Doesn't know. Doesn't matter what chapter it is. Let's just pick sure. the day that I think would work. Yeah. Should I change the um the titles of them to what it is in the book? Yeah, that'd be great. 
you know, there's like software development practices and I better check them. Yeah, I'm on the second petition. Okay. Well, I can do continuous on. integration. <laughs> oh, it's two. We have two uh, command check. Oh my God, I do not want to do that. Our command check, yeah. <laughs> okay, I guess I can go in software development practice uh, and see like what's happening to it. <laughs> gotcha. Very good. We can do continuous yeah, yeah. integration, but I'm waiting a bit to check. Yeah, okay. it doesn't look like it's called that anymore. And they moved our command check to the appendix. Yeah. But we should probably still read it. Because... Oh my yeah, God. So long. I, I will run out of battery soon. Anyway, we can discuss more off offline. But oh. thanks again. A lot for me. Bye. And thanks again. A lot for me. Thank you. See you later. See you next week. Go back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. See you guys. See you.